Because he was a guide, a hadi. We say that he is the best of guides for the whole of humanity. Now, if my master, for example, says that I should follow him in his commands, if the emperor says I must follow this governor in his commands, does that mean I've made the, the, the governor emperor? No. It's quite clear that the command comes from God and to follow the Prophet Muhammad. It's very clear, it's the basic, we don't need too much language. The second one in regards to the hadith, now he tried to cast aspersions on the hadith. It's not going to work. Bilal radiallahu anh, he called the adhan, the adhan. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah. From the time of Zaman, from the beginning to now, in prayer the Muslims said what? Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. So he said this is a bidah. We have evidence now. If he rejects hadith, he has to reject the majority of history as well. Because hadith is some of the most vigorous uh, uh, information or uh, history that we actually have. We have a supporting chain of narration. We have something called the Hamul Ilm. We didn't, I would not be able to pass down history unless my teacher who is an eyewitness and we know his character, we know his memory retention, his ability to recall information and give it and his honesty and so on and so forth. Yeah? Witness that event and he passed it down to his student to pass it down to his student. So if you reject Hadith, you reject history. You have to have consistency. There's no point in going on ad infinite. I'll let you have the last word. But I think it's quite, I see it's quite clear for everyone. This discussion is just folly. Anyway, Barakallahu okay. feek. Tell him here. Would you like to stay? No, I'll stay. I'll watch from the side, man. Okay. I'll give you the last word. Oh, you want me the word, last word as well. Oh, oh, oh fantastic. Stop fantastic. acting as well. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> right, so, um, the good brother over here is talking about, you know, uh, history and Hadiths and so forth, right? As to say that the Hadiths don't actually contradict themselves. As to say that there's Hadiths that aren't graded as weak, aren't graded as um, strong, aren't graded as... I don't even know, Continue. what's the word? Fabricated yeah, and so forth. Over and There's over loads it. of different hadiths that we can Unless clearly see new. there is contradictions in there. Anyways, again he was talking about, where is he? Oh, it's I would stay, but I... I, I you also talked about, about, you also talked about, um, you know, following the messenger as well as following the Quran and so forth, right? But there is contradictions going on. For example, I'm going to give you something just simple, something real simple. I'm not going to say it's, it's the end all or be all. But for example, in the Quran, how many wives can you have at maximum? Anybody? How many wives can you have at maximum? Four. Four. Four wives. Four wives. Four wives, Four wives. at one time, right? Yeah. Four wives at one time. That's what the Quran says. But then, when you go into Hadith culture, how many wives did the Prophet actually have? He had 13. 13. 14. 13. Let's just say 13, for example. So clearly, there is a contradiction going on. Which one should we follow? Should we follow marrying 13 wives, or should we follow marrying four wives as the Quran states? Right? And if we choose marrying 13 wives, as the Prophet did, according to the Hadith culture, we're choosing the Prophet over the Quran, or Allah's words. If the Quran says you shouldn't marry um, young girls, or you should marry women, but then Muhammad had sexual relationships and marriage, sorry, 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 let me repeat that again. He married a young girl at the age of nine, according to some Hadith culture, right? But then the Quran says you should only marry women. Which one should we follow? The Quran also allows you to marry women that haven't had their period. Yeah. It's actually in we'll, the first. We'll talk about it another time, right? That's another conversation. Right? So which one do we follow? In Yemen right now, they're marrying nine-year-old girls. Right? Which one do, do they follow? Is it, are they following the Quran or they're following Muhammad and his hadiths? Clearly, we can see that there is issues right there. Clearly, we can see if you bind partnership, right, with Allah and Muhammad, you're going to have to choose one or the other in certain times of contradictions, right? And that's my whole point. If you're choosing Muhammad's words over Allah's words, you're choosing to worship Muhammad or the supposed words of Muhammad over Allah. Is that plain and simple? Some people, it's going to be too difficult to comprehend that. Others, you all should be able to grasp that. It's not that difficult. Can I ask you a question? Please. You said that if you're choosing Muhammad's words, I'd like yeah. you to continue. Okay. But how many times does the Quran actually tell you to pray? The Quran doesn't actually give you amount of times to pray. It does tell you numerically. Times. No, it doesn't tell you. It doesn't, tell you. It doesn't tell you numerically how many times to pray. It tells. It tells you a prayer during the morning. Prayer like prayer in the morning or glorify your God in the morning. Um, in the middle and at, at night. So that's three times, yes, yeah. which I wanted you to confirm. Yeah. Because you said it doesn't give you, but it tells you the times to pray, yeah. which comes up to three. Yeah. How many times do you pray as a Muslim? I'm not a Muslim. 
Okay, you're not a Muslim. No. All right. Uh, Muslims do pray five times, so they get that from the Hadith culture. Yeah. Um, I tried to get into this conversation to ask about the Shahada, because I heard there was a debate of the Shahada. Yeah. Did you mention that um, Shahada issue out? Uh, yeah. Were you the one? Can yeah. you please give me a description of where the Shahada comes from? So the Shahada is actually mentioned within inside of the Quran, right? Okay. So to bear witness that, you know, he's the only one worthy of worship, or to bear witness that he's the Lord and so forth and so forth. That's is that really the Shahada? Do you know the Shahada? Well, the Shahada in terms of Laila Haila Allah or Ashahadu Anna La Ilaha Ila Allah. Do you know the origins of the Shahada? Yes, what do you mean by the origin? Uh, where, where, who, where was the first religion to actually use that shahada? The first religion according to, according to what they said? Um, according to Islam, because um, okay. they said there were many prophets before Muhammad. They okay. say, I mean, this is a Islam's yeah. claim. So, so, according to the Islamic narrative, yes. um, one would propose that it would be the Hanafiya, would be the first people. The Hanafiya. Would, Hanafiya would and be who the were first the Hanafiya? People. What was their worship? Were they Muslims? No, they were not Muslims in the, in the sense of, um, of, of the religion of Islam. One would say, in terms of semantically, they were the ones who um, submitted themselves to God or, or you know, all that, all that stuff. Okay. Okay. The Hanifa. Yeah, well, Hanifa. I can tell you where the actual origin. Well, well, the actual, for example, you can find the, you know, the certain verbiage within inside of the Jewish scripture before itself. No, um, that's the Shema you're talking about. There's only one God. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, there is other yeah, things and the negation. There is of, one God. And the yeah. negation of other gods. Okay. Um, but, in the regards to the Shahada, yeah. it actually has an origin in another religion. Are you aware of this? Um, yes, it's, it's inside of... Are you filming? Yeah, it's inside of... Whoa, that's a very lo lovely red, yeah. lovely red. So inside of the what you consider to be from an Islamic point of view, from an Islamic narrative, Islamic you got narrative. the Al Hanafiya, right? Al Hanafiya. But they ha they go by several different names. So you have the Sab Sabians. Oh, thank you. So yeah. now you've got to the. So let me give you the historic narrative on the Shahada, yeah. so that I can enlighten you to the true knowledge of where the Shahada came from. Do you know anything about the Sabian culture? Yeah. Um, what do you know about the Sabians? So. Most of what we know about the Sabians um, yes. is coming from Islamic narrative. Yes. But there is other narratives that predate the Islamic, the Islamic one. You have Christian narratives, you have the Greek uh, culture as well that speak about the, um, the Sabians as well. Oh, speak yeah. about the Sabians. Yeah. And if you know there's a surah that says that the people that go to heaven are the people of the book, yeah. the Sabians, and this was abrogated later on by Muhammad. So I'm going to give you two references mm -hmm. for you to like, uh, because you sound like an intelligent person and rarely hear that we talk to people that they have intelligence and they do their research. So I say that as a thumbs up to your integrity, but uh, I'd like to give you some other scholarly issues. Okay. Uh, if you look at the Encyclopedia of Islam, mm -hmm. page number six, you'll find out some um, relationships about who the god of the uh, Meccans was pre previous to the Muhammad having his prophecy for uh, Islam. But according to the Middle East scholar Ian e. Weary, mm -hmm. whose translation of the Quran is still used today, mm -hmm. in pre-Islamic times, Allah worship, as, worship, as well as the worship of Ba'al, mm -hmm. were both astral religions, yeah. that they involved the worship of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Now, uh, and uh, this is a citation from a book called A Comprehensive Commentary on the Quran. Mm -hmm. Osnabrück, Otto Zeller, Verlag, 1973 in page 36. Now you mentioned the Sabians. Uh, were, are you aware of the uh, worship of the Sabians? Yes, they were an astral. It's another astral religion. It's okay, astral, astral, astral religion. 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 Yes. yes, and they worship five times a day uh, at, uh, in the morning and that. Where yeah, Islam really. got its uh, initial prayers from. Yes. That's why the Sabians were agreed to go to heaven in the original before the verses are abrogated. Yeah. Now, strangely, what a lot of people are not aware of mm -hmm. is that the Shahada is actually from the Sabian tradition. 100%. And I'm going to give you 100%. Thank you. You're the first person that recognizes a lot of the Muslims here screaming the Shahada. Yeah. Not the Muhammad part. That was actually incorporated by Islam, yeah. which we have to give that definition to. Yeah. But the original Shahada come from the Sabian. Right. So I'll give you a few historical uh, piece of figures that have given this record so that you will have a more pronouncement in your knowledge long term. Um, and this is on the Sabians, and this is by an Islamic, uh, well, I want to call it uh, an Arab scholar uh, called Abid al Rahman. Apologize for my um, translations, I'm not an Arab. Uh, Ibn Zayd in 79 C uh, AD wrote The Sabians say their religion is a religion unto itself. They live near Mosul, uh, just in Rat al Malsil, mm -hmm. uh, which is Mosul, uh, mm -hmm. city of Mosul, mm -hmm. and believe 
in only one God. Yeah. He wrote that they have no they have no cult of their own. Their main belief is La ilaha il Allah. He also remarked that the Sabian did not believe in the Prophet Muhammad the same way his followers did. Yet the polytheists were known to say the Prophet Muhammad and his companions, they were Sabians, comparing them to them. Following Din and Noah, a sect who read the Zabar. So the Sabians read the Zabar, like the, the Psalms, which you, you would be aware. And um, it also goes, there's a lot of other scholars that did mention this. I'm aware. So the Sabian religion is, um, in modern times, it's called the Mandians. And there's a documentary by the BBC on them. Yeah. They also believe in baptism and they yeah. believe in John the Baptist, which yeah. is kind of strange. Yeah. So the Sabian religion is actually where the Shahada comes from. Yeah. And this is a historical fact. Mm -hmm. So since you're not a Muslim, it would be very hard to sell this idea to you. But I think a lot of Muslims are actually ignorant to the fact mm -hmm. that their Shahada is a Sabian, which is a pagan religion yeah. of moon worship. Yeah. And if you know Cuba and Yasin, mm -hmm. Yasin is also a, a, a chapter in the Quran. Yeah. Yasin is another name for Hubal, which is another name for Baal. Mm -hmm. And um, um, some Christian channels, like uh, Christian Prince, explain that um, La is the moon god, which is the god taught in the um, Emerald Book of Toth, which is the book of the Egyptian Egyptologist. It's wrong. Um, well, yeah. they'll say this, but if you look at the hieroglyphics and the archaeology, I, I, I read hieroglyphics. There's a lot. I read okay. I, I do as well, strangely. I read the Emerald yeah. Book of Toth in hieroglyphics. Yeah. Yeah. So, I spent a few so years. So, so, yeah. so I, I'm one of those that are very well scholared yeah. Yeah. in the occult yeah. and everything. Yeah. So, so I, I'm going to quickly say, I read okay. it. I, I read hieroglyphics and I saw okay. what Christian Prince did, yeah. and it was commendable, and I'm like, well done, but unfortunately, he did make a little mistake. Okay, on uh, on on, on the uh, probably on the translation of what Al but on, wasn't off, yeah. Al the meaning of God like Baal. It's yeah. a it's a hyphen, so Al means something. Yeah. It doesn't mean the. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a generic term. It's a for generic God in term. Semitic so yeah. La must be the name of the God that they worship yeah. because um, the Sabians had this God yeah. and. From Christianity perspective, which I am a Christian and I'm an evangelist, yeah. I do not associate myself with the name of a God that is not Yahweh. Yeah. But what we need, uh, what you can confirm is that um, the Sabian Shahada is what the Muslims incorporated yeah. and they use Muhammad uh, Rasulullah, yeah. uh, I've forgotten the Arabic translation, yeah. and I won't say it because they will start saying I've converted to Islam here yeah. in Speaker's yeah. Corner. Yeah. Uh, but the Sabians yeah. were the ones that brought the Shahada to the Islamic concept. 100%. 100%. Well, according to the Hadith culture, clearly Muhammad adopted the Shahada from yeah. uh, Do you know what else that Islam took for the Sabians? So, it, well, head, uh, one, one could say he took the prayer system from them. Yes, five prayers, um, that's correct. One could say Ramadan there is well. fasting as well. Yes, yeah, Ramadan. There is the charity but charity as well. The zakat. There is a whole list of things. Um, pilgrimage as well. Uh, basically, I think... The five pillars of Islam is literally coming from the Sabian religion. Precisely, yeah. and you mentioned the Hanifa, and the Hanifa were a sect of the Sabians, yeah. which um, you should be aware of historically. Yeah. Yeah. And the Hanifa were, um, for example... Um, were the ones who were responsible for educating Muhammad. Precisely, yeah. and um, you would know, um, sorry, what's Muhammad scholar, the guy that... Warakai. Waraka. He was um, one of the chief priests of the Sabian sect. That's right. He was not uh, a people of the book. He wasn't a Christian, as some Muslims are led to believe, but he was actually a Sabian high priest yeah. and they believed in cave worship which the Sabians also did yeah. where they received revelations by doing so in in fact um, Islam as the Muslims claim yeah. is an old religion yeah. uh, Muhammad is the one that's refined that religion mm -hmm. but Islam has existed from the time of the Sabians yeah. um, do you know any biblical context to the Sabians just out of uh, interest biblical context to the Sabians <laughs> Possibly, but go ahead. Educate okay, me. I'll give you. Um, you know the oldest book in the Bible. Just a quick question. Do you know which one it is? The oldest book was inside of the, the canon of the Bible. Yeah, the canon right of the Bible. Um, some people argue to say Job. But yes, you're, no, you're right. It's a, actually Job is the author of the book of Job. Is actually the prophet Moses. Yeah. Uh, so he was told these narrations before, yeah. and he incorporated it, in which we call the Torah and separate Job. Yeah. Job uh, family was attacked by the Sabians, yeah. uh, and they were the ones that killed his family, yeah. and they were the people in the desert. Um, another record of the Sabian with, with the crescent moon symbol was in the book of Judges, um, when um, um, I've forgotten his name, which prophet it was 
um, he slew them and he took their um, ornaments or um, present uh, ornaments. So what we do know is that we have historical evidence that the god Hubal has the um, crescent. crescent moon and it was one of the chief stones inside when we look at the tafsirs on um, Quranic tafsir, I can't remember the ones off head. Mm. So we can establish that the Muslims need to reflect on their religion in a holistic way. Look at things like the Encyclopedia of Islam. Look at the pagan roots of, of, <laughs> yes, of Islam. Pagan. Yeah. So you being someone that doesn't believe in Islam, no. and are you a Christian just to... No, no, I'm just Okay, so you're not a Christian, so this is a quite decent conversation between two people that are truth seekers, yes. and you can confirm that, yes, Islam does take Sabian tradition, 100%. and um, it's very different to what they think it is. 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah. What's your name, by the way? Callum. Callum. Yeah. My name's Yakub. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Nice why are you not a Christian? Uh, yes, why are you not a Christian? Oh, man! Oh, man. Why are you not a Christian? Someone like um, you that says, oh, Why am I not a Christian? Yes. Um, ooh, that's a good question. That's a very good question. You know what, yeah? Um, the reason why I'm not a Christian is because Jesus was not a Christian. That's a simple answer. The question is, who are the saviors? Yeah, the Sabians are the oldest religion. They're the moon worshippers, the astral... Um, but I am... I am a follower of the Logos, though. I am. Uh, Zoroastrianism is from Persia. Okay, he, he follows the Logos. I follow the Logos. Though. You follow the Logos. Yes. Callum, that was a really beautiful conversation. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, Callum. Thank you, So, we, I'd like to thank Callum for giving me a time to address him. And he has confirmed that uh, Islam is built on the Sabian traditions. The five pillars of Islam cover Sabianism. Uh, the Sabians were the ones that killed the Prophet Job. So, this is concrete evidence. Like he said with his own mouth, they take five pagan traditions from the Sabians, the prayer, the zakat, Ramadan, um, the uh, shahada, these are not practices of the one God. We as Christians, we worship the one true God, which is mentioned in Genesis, the Spirit of God, the Son of God, and the Father. These are the three that are one in form. Um, we call on Muslims to start looking at the Encyclopedia of Islam and other literature. If you do not believe the Bible, at least research your own religion so you have a better understanding. When you're screaming your shahada here to heckle us when we're preaching the gospel, you're actually screaming pagan chants. And this is evidence known to anybody that has any historical knowledge. Once more, if you want to be saved, ensure that you have eternal salvation. You have to come to our Lord Jesus Christ. It is true that profession of your faith in Christ and belief that the Son of God died on the cross in atonement for your sin that will bring you to salvation. Your zakat, your shahada and other things will not save you from the eternal damnation. So please research because eternity in hellfire is not where you want to be going. And when you have been shown concrete evidence that your religion is built on pagan foundations, you need to take this very seriously.